Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white tokens deck featuring four copies of Imodane's Recruiter. This 3-mana 2-2 when it enters the battlefield gives all our creatures we control plus 1 plus 0 and haste until end of turn. So by itself it attacks as a 3-part creature, but we can maybe play it alongside some other token makers in our deck and immediately attack with our entire team. So this is quite the payoff for making a whole bunch of tokens and our deck is quite good at making them. Starting out at 1-mana with Gleeful Demolition, not a card we can actually play on turn 1 in this deck since we don't have any 0 mana artifacts that we can destroy like we can in Explorer, but still very good at enabling our Recruiter to hit for a ton of damage, as well as setting up the Convoke on our Knight Errant of Eos. This one is our main source of card advantage in the deck of 4-4 that can find additional creatures in the top 6 cards of our library. And in this deck we either want to tap 3 creatures if possible, or go for the full 5 so we can find additional copies of Knight Errant, there's no 4 mana creature in the deck. And then of course Demolition requires us to have an artifact to destroy, which is where the four copies of the Frontliner come in handy, a 1-1 that can give another attacking creature plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and we can also unearth it so we don't feel bad about destroying it with our own Demolition, or maybe discarding it with a Blood Token from Epicure, the Blood Token another artifact we can target with Demolition to make three 1-1s, and then we also have four copies of Charming Scoundrel, which can generate a treasure token when it enters the battlefield, so that's another artifact to potentially set up our Demolition so there's no shortage of enablers. And then we've got two copies of Lunark Veteran, which can gain a lot of life whenever we're making creatures, so helps out against Monorad Aggro, and can also disturb it from our graveyard. And then a Regal Bunnycorn grows with a number of non-land permanents we have in play, so another nice payoff for making a bunch of tokens, including the artifact tokens from Epicure, or potentially the blood tokens and wicked roll tokens from Charming Scoundrel, so this one is also quite flexible, can play it as a 2-2 haste essentially with a bit of upside, but can also generate more mana, maybe discard and draw if we're digging for specific outs. And then we've got some 2-mana token makers, Resolute Reinforcements is a creature, so it does have the upside of also being able to find it with Knight Errant of Eos, but for added consistency we're also playing 4 copies of Aral's reinforcements, making 2 1-1 one, one elemental tokens. And that's pretty much our entire deck, our mana base also has 2 copies of the creature land, the Restless Bivouac can maybe help cross the finish line if our opponent is low enough, and then a Crucible and Iganjo offer a tiny bit more interaction. But for the most part we're looking for an opening hand with a few token makers, and then hopefully a couple payoffs between Bunnycorn, a Recruiter, and Knight Errant. This one especially can find our author finishers, so it's definitely among the most important cards in the deck. So yeah, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. A bit land heavy, but at least we've got a creature land. And then a frontliner to go with demolition is nice too. Probably still playing it turn one, and then turn two can attack and then play demolition plus a tap land. And then hope to find Knight Errants up against the Red Aggro. Reinforcements to draw. So we'll attack and Demolition. Could also cast Reinforcements and then next turn we can double spell the Resolute Reinforcements with Demolition to be a bit more mana efficient. Sure. I do want to cast a Demolition before our opponent gets Etching of Kumano. Otherwise they could potentially exile my Frontliner, which would be bad. It's gonna be Swift Spear plus another Kumano, that hurts. I think we still take it though. And then attack. And Demolition. Keeping the Resolute Reinforcements available. And then really hoping for some payoff card here, whether it's Bunny Corn, Recruiter, or Knight Errant. Lightning Strike goes face. Probably jumping the Swiss Spear with at least one creature. 
Blocking etching could work out poorly for opponents going to Monstrous Rage, but I guess they could also trample the Swiss Spear. So jumping doesn't necessarily work out. So then I would have to like triple block etching, jump Swift Spear to try and elicit a trade. Although I think I just need to get lucky and top deck a finisher of some sort, so I might as well take it. And then Recruiter plus an Earth Frontliner might be just enough. Night Errant, okay, that's a start. So, tap five creatures. So we can maybe find another Night Errant. Just the reinforcements, ouch. That was pretty bad. So I can unearth Frontliner. And hit for 4 damage, essentially. And then next turn we can animate the bivouac. Assuming we're still alive, which is not a given. So if Knight Errant goes on Swiss Spear with Monstrous Rage, they would still trample over for one damage without losing the Swiss Spear. But then at least I soak up a bunch of damage. And then I might have to chump chump. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the way back, so we'd still need to top deck. And that's assuming they don't have any blockers. If I block like so, opponent has Monstrous Rage. Uses it on etching, we still take essentially uh, 4 plus 2 is 6, down to 1, so I'm still dead to any other burn spell. Yeah, I think I have to double chump. And then there's a chance Knight Aaron survives if they don't pump the Swiss Spear. Just a strangle to finish it off, alright, that's not too bad. Get to untap, frontliner the draw. Animate bivouac, and then we should be one short, assuming no interaction. But they might take out our creature land. Alright, so let's just be a little bit more conservative. And then leave two blockers back. And they Lightning Strike the Bivouac. Alright, that's not too bad. Points at four. Got two blockers. One card in hand. It's a Crucible. That's definitely beatable. Points has to hang back. And we found an Igancho, so time to turn the team sideways. And that should be game here, exactly 4 damage going through. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. What do we think of our hand? A lot of 2 drops. At least Scoundrel can make a treasure token to maybe help us double spell a bit better. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not perfect. I think it's still worth a shot. Double bunny corn with multiple cards that can generate more than one uh, permanent is quite useful. And against turn one planes, I actually don't mind playing bunny corn on turn two. So we can already attack as a 3 3 potentially. Alright. So we'll probably go for a scoundrel and then make a treasure. Don't think Scoundrel's attacking, since it could have a Virtue of Loyalty token. Although, at that point, I could just play another Bunnycorn and pass, and then next turn, attack with multiples. But I also kind of need to empty out my hand here. So, a tough call, for sure. 
Let's go with Scoundrel, make a treasure. And hit for three. Did not seem like that a virtue of loyalty, but I'll still respect it. Adlin is next. So having a large bunny corn on defense can also be useful now. So I want to play stuff main phase to grow the initial bunny corn. And that's now hitting for six. Hope they can't remove the second one. And then if we find a recruiter at some point, we're in business. Wandering Emperor can exile the Tamp Bunny Corn. Still doesn't get past the other one. I'm not overconfident. You're just underwhelming. <laughs> you are not much of a roadblock. Okay, so I'll have to sacrifice one of my creatures to finish off Wandering Emperor, which seems worth it. And then Bunny Corn goes face, hoping they don't have a second Wandering Emperor pretty much. And then go Reinforcements plus Frontliner, looks good. So they can eat one of my creatures for free, unless they want to chump Bunnycorn, which is also an option. So Scoundrel down. And now, with double Scoundrel coming up, with Wicked Roll tokens especially, we can hopefully close out the game. Another Emperor was to be expected, so opponent's back up to 6. They can now attack with Adlin as well if they'd like. So do we have enough to end the game? Double Scoundrel, 2 twos. Should still be enough. If there's nothing else. And smash all out, going face. And our opponent explodes, awesome. And be double Emperor here, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one planes. So let's go with the veteran first so we can gain some life back. Haven't decided yet if we want to play turn 2 bunny corn. Okay, against green white enchantments, the main removal we're worried about is ossification. And that's going to get the bunny corn no matter how large it is, so sure, we'll play it now. Don't really want to trade veteran. Might need it for convoke. A restoration on 3. Restoration makes it more likely that our opponent's playing a build with hallowed haunting which is going to be pretty good in the late game. So all the more reason to apply as much pressure as possible while we can. So we can play Epicure to make use of our red mana. And then maybe flash in reinforcements at instant speed. Assuming they don't chum block the bunny corn. And then now I maybe don't mind trading veteran for companion, even though... They would get it back with Restoration, still enter stamped, and we're just trying to push as much damage as possible here. Right, and then now Reinforcements grows Bunny Corn, so it hits for 6, which is a bit more substantial. And then hoping for Recruiter and Knight Errants. Those are kind of the finishers we need. Opponent did have an ossification in hand, so that can deal with the bunny corn, sadly. And they still have their four mana available. And a Tukasia's welcome, okay. So they're definitely prepared for the late game. So we can empty out our hand here, try and get in as much damage as we can. And then next turn we can worry about using our blood tokens to dig for a finisher. Could also use blood token now, discard frontliner. 
Although if I find a recruiter, I would probably still wait to play it. I guess a uh, knight errant I wouldn't be opposed to playing now. So yeah, let's just use the blood token, I guess. Means a little bit less pressure right now, but potentially a better top deck. And yeah, recruiter certainly counts. So do I play it now? Would hit for... Let's see, 6 plus 3 is 9, put our opponent to 4. Or I can go for it next turn and potentially close out the game. Let's try that. So attack for 3. And then we can unearth Frontliner, still play Recruiter to give it haste. And try to go wide enough here. Can move transients is fine. And a Weaver of Harmony, so our opponent's got three blockers. And now with the Charming Scoundrel, does that make a difference? Probably still better to unearth Frontliner. And attack all out. Three blockers, block my three largest. Still have them taking 10 damage. Welcome draws. And that does it. Sweet. Close one here against Green White Enchantments. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Even though I guess our tap lands are a bit of a concern. But I think we've got enough going for us still. With Apicure enabling Demolition, Bunnycorn is going to be pretty large. Opponent blue-black. Okay, so turn two could play Bunnycorn, although it still dies to cut down and Virtue of Persistence. So maybe start with a Reinforcements, which lines up better against Spot Removal, and then next turn could go Bunnycorn plus Epicure, so it's out of range from those smaller removal spells. And then we can demolition the uh, token afterwards. Yeah, pretty important decision early on here. But uh, yeah, let's go for reinforcements. Looks like they have something for one mana. Esper, could be Esper Legends. Also good reason to play Reinforcements before Thalia comes down. This is Sunset Revelry. Yep, Putin made sure to deal themselves one damage so they could gain four. Well, it's going to be tricky to get through with a Bunnycorn now, but it's still probably the play. And then do we want to attack with both tokens? If they both trade, we kind of open up an avenue for the Bunnycorn. And I guess they're not going anywhere. The only reason to keep the tokens is for Convoke purposes. But I think I'm okay trading now. Since we need to open up a path for a Regal Bunnycorn. Bonin trades for both. Could still go with Scoundrel, since Bunnycorn would still die to Virtue Persistence. But I think I need to deploy it now, if we want to get an attack in with it. Alright, Celestus for now. And another Bunnycorn. So, if our opponent's got a Sunfall, we're in trouble. I do have a Bivouac as a creature land, that helps. Definitely need to grow Bunnycorn before attacking, so it doesn't die to an Elspeth's Smite, which her opponent could still have. So maybe it's just commit the Bunnycorn anyway and hope they don't have the Sweeper, since we're probably not beating it. Could also go for Treasure, play Bunnycorn and play Demolition, just empty my whole hand. Yeah, may as well at this point. Not sure what they're holding for one mana. Could be a Fading Hope. Cut down seems more likely. Do 
do this first to play around the potential spell pierce, I suppose. And then it doesn't matter if I attack first or play bunny corn since I would have to sack a treasure token. So I may as well deny a little bit of information. Alright, opponent's at 13, so do I commit another bunny corn? Problem with holding it is it's not going to be very large if our opponent does have a sweeper here, so may as well go for broke. And hope they don't have a sweeper next turn. And then there's still the bivouac to deal a couple points, but it's not going to deal 13 damage. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, dodged a potential sweeper here. And that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has lots of payoff cards for putting tokens in play. Not a lot of token generators, just a double epicure to start out. So if we find like a gleeful demolition early on, this could work. A two mana token maker, perhaps. It's definitely a bit sketchy, but the late game of Double Knight Errant is quite powerful, so I'm gonna try it. Frontliner helps. Definitely want to epic here on one to make use of our red mana, which could be a bottleneck. And then next turn we can double spell Epicure and Frontliner. Opponent also maybe red-white tokens. Land is good. I don't really want to trade in case our opponent has reinforcements here. Let's see if there's a response. Opponent does seem to be holding priority. Yeah, I'm just gonna preserve my creatures so we can convoke next turn. It's gonna be virtual loyalty, even more of a reason to hang back. Virtue, a card we could be playing ourselves. The main issue is 5 mana to cast the enchantment is pretty pricey. And outside of maybe making a treasure token with a scoundrel, we're not super likely to get to it. Another frontliner. So we can play frontliner, unearth frontliner, and then still convoke knight errands. But um, yeah, it's not going to be a convoke for five, so may as well just tap three creatures then and keep the frontliner in the graveyard. And yeah, we found bunny corn and another recruiter, I think. We also have the. Sorcery Speed Adventure here, Train Troops at 5 mana as another kind of mana sink if we're flooding a bit. But of course Virtue can be quite nice if you're making a bunch of tokens. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and deploy as many creatures as possible, which I think includes going Bunny Corn, Convoke another Knight Errant, opponent might have Wandering Emperor to exile my other knight errands, but if I tap it, they can still exile it. So that's not really going to make a difference. But yeah, let's go bunny corn. Tap five creatures, and then they might exile the bunny corn instead. We'll see. Opponent with a duelist to kill frontliner. So... In that case... I could unearth frontliner, so I can tap five creatures. But now I think I prefer attack for four and then just convoke tapping three creatures. So let's attack. And then next turn, hopefully jam a recruiter. With a land I could give Bunny Corn haste as well with the recruiter's ability. Just a duelist, and our opponent keeps up three mana. Gleeful Demolition, also quite nice here with a blood token. So we can Demolition and then play Recruiter. And turn the team sideways. The 
Bitcoin's got another virtue token. So they're definitely chumping bunny corn. Maybe trade for recruiter, chump another knight errands. Or chump both. Alright, hope they don't have a sweeper here. Although even if they do, we still have ways to close out the game with plenty of haste creatures. And the wicked roll especially can be effective. Alright, GG's. Looks like we got there. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Could use more tokens to go with Recruiter and Bunnycorn, but it's still a decent curve to start out. Finding a Gleeful Demolition to go with Frontliner would be pretty effective. And otherwise, any of our two mana token makers are welcome. Could have started with planes so we don't give away both of our colors, but don't think it really matters. Turn one, a lookout, okay. So maybe a mono white artifact kind of affinity aggro deck. So they're gonna have a pretty similar game plan to ours. And we're flooding a little bit here. Can maybe use a 5 mana adventure on our next recruiter. Or we can just keep turning our team sideways and hope for the best. Another automaton. And that's it, and there's our gleeful demolition. Perfect. So. Demolition the Frontliner, and then Recruiter number two is going to be a lot for the opponent to deal with. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential. Can go turn two, Ralph's Reinforcements, turn three, Scoundrel Make a Treasure, and Demolition the Treasure, allowing us to immediately convoke Night Tyrant. And now we can even play turn one, Frontliner. Up against what looks like Black Green Midrange. Blast Zone. I guess most of our tokens have zero mana value, so it's not a huge concern. Wayfinder hitting us is a little bit annoying. So we have a couple options. Can go for reinforcements, either one of them, or scoundrel. I guess we'll use up our white mana here since we're potentially bottlenecked on white. And then we can reinforcements during the opponent's turn. Potentially triple blocking Wayfinder, although this can be ugly in the face of potential removal. So I'll just take the hits, hope they don't reveal a land. Gonna be a trespasser going to the graveyard. Play reinforcements. And then we're gonna want to demolition the treasure as opposed to frontliner, so we play around spot removal. So scoundrel. Make treasure. Demolition. Suppose it could still have a Terra Sunder, but not super likely. And then Convoke Knight Errands, tapping as many summoning sick creatures as possible. Need at least one white creature. And then Frontliner can attack here. Not a bad turn. Hope to find a Recruiter. There we go, times two even. Or I could grab a Bunny Corn. Kind of feel like Recruiter into Recruiter is going to be the way forward. And we even have a blocker for the Wayfinder now. Could see something like Glissa as a good blocker, but we're going wide enough at this point that it may not matter. Blast Zone only hits Frontliner at the moment. Contaminator's next. Another decent blocker. But yeah, we're just gonna turn our team sideways. Don't think we need to build up our board even more. 
And then I should pump probably the Recruiter, so it can trade for a Contaminator. So block two smaller creatures, or I guess they can trade for Knight Errants. And still take close to lethal, not quite. Opponent goes to one here. So it's not going to take much here to cross the finish line. And our opponent agrees. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Veteran into reinforcements. Convoke Knight Errant. Play Recruiter. So our next couple turns are pretty scripted. Well, let's see what we're up against. It's going to be Garden, so it could be Multicolor Domain deck. So Sweepers should definitely be on our radar. But uh, yeah, our deck can't really hold back, just gotta go for it. Argoth is unusual, so not entirely sure what they're playing. Okay, can even play Frontliner before we Convoke. I guess there's no real difference between tapping three creatures or four creatures, so I may as well attack for one then, since there's no four drops in the deck. Okay, find Bunnycorn and I want to say Scoundrel. I guess Tapping Veteran would have allowed me to play one drop second main, which maybe would have been better. Circuit Mender is next. Okay, so I'm sort of tempted to hang on to Recruiter to maybe even give Bunnycorn haste. And then for now I could attack all out. I guess if I want to channel Iganjo, then next turn I'm not guaranteed to go Bunnycorn plus Recruiter. So kind of an interesting spot. Could just play Recruiter and Smash. Maybe alongside a Scoundrel with uh, a treasure token here. Yeah, that seems good enough. Just get the damage in while the getting's good. And then I probably want to pump a creature author than veteran, because if that trades we still get to replay it from the graveyard. Uh, so Scoundrel I guess is fine. And then I'll maybe trade there. Pumping Recruiter was also reasonable. Opponent actually blocks the Veteran. So next turn I can play Bunnycorn and get back Phantom. Opponent falls to three. And they'll need a pretty specific answer to survive. No double white. So that limits the number of outs here. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, not much you can do about some of these better starts from the red-white tokens deck. So that kind of sums up this deck in general. It's a bit higher variance than your typical aggro decks, but the highs are incredibly high if you've got one of these explosive draws with Gleeful Demolition, setting up your Convoke on Knight Errant and potentially Recruiter to end the game. So it's definitely one of these very explosive decks, but it also means that sometimes you'll have a draw with a bunch of token makers without a payoff, and those games are going to feel pretty bad. But yeah, in general, I've had a good time playing this deck, and the win rate is certainly quite high. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.